Hey, what's up agents? Rick Tater here again with another video. And today I am wanting to go over the big title update 8.5 that dropped on us today. This update's given us a bunch of bug fixes. It's given us some NPC changes, some balance changes that we've all been asking for, especially around some of the Warhounds. So it seems like Massive is starting to listen. Uh, I know recently I just did a video in regards to the seven things I feel like that needed to be nerfed within the Division 2. Um, and it seems like some of those are now being addressed, thankfully. So I'm going to go through these pretty quick. I know a lot of y'all are probably wondering what's going on and uh, what has been changed. So not going to waste some time. So let's get over to them now. Now, the first big thing that's been changed has been the bug fixes. So first off, they fixed an issue causing the stack acquisition of Strikers Gamble to be inconsistent. Uh, they then fixed the issue causing players to be unable to revive other agents. That has been a big one that I have come across several times uh, while running through missions uh, on challenging heroic. Very frustrating. Uh, fixed an issue to revive UI to disappear if killed too fast. Um, crossbow expert talents have been going through uh, and changed over in the DZ and safe house uh, fixed an issue causing joyride weapon skins not be applied to stinger so there's a lot of changes here especially on these are these are the bugs like I mentioned before so the big one as well was, that I've come across was the league reward caches being contaminated if you're in the dark zone and you're trying to farm for something and you get a league cache it sometimes has been coming through uh, as contaminated, which is very frustrating, unfortunately. Um, the other thing as well, one of the big ones, is that they fixed an issue causing players to be able to gain infinite ammunition. Um, that, I think, was a bug that was exploited by some players as well recently. Um, that's another video entirely at some other exploitations, but not going to go into those. Now, the one thing, the big bug that I think they're going to be going through on this uh, that some people have been wanting to talk about and go through uh, has been temporarily removing Warhounds from the first mission uh, within the Washington National Zoo. I know the Washington National Zoo feels about as long as the actual campaign. So now this is preventing Warhogs from getting, uh, or Warhounds, sorry, from getting stuck in the roof of the National Zoo. Uh, as it goes through. That was one of the big issues people were having and other agents were having is when they were trying to clear that area, they were stuck on the roof, could not jump down, could not kill them, even with seeker mines and everything else. Uh, and a proper fix for this as well, as they're mentioning, is coming in Title Update 9, which is very, very nice to have. Uh, and then the other one as well is they fixed an issue causing a checkpoint with the heroic def difficulty of the DARPA Research Lab uh that's missing there is another one that has been an issue as well uh that is the explosives for one of the missions going for the most recent manhunt uh do not appear so it does not let you progress supposedly that is being fixed as well now they did mention the heroic difficulty like i mentioned before and then receive self damage while enemy an enemy player in full flag debuff from the true patriot gear set so there's a lot of stuff with some of the gear sets that have been going through and some people having issues with those. It seems like a lot of the gear sets are being uh, fixed at this point in time. Now, the last one as well is fixed an issue that caused the season level at 60 and 65 rewards to be incorrect. So you weren't basically getting the drops you're supposed to be getting. Now, gameplay changes. This is the big one. This is what a lot of people are wondering what's been going on. So now control points can be changed and reset in the global difficulty. Uh, changing directors will not reset control points. League UI should now be more in, uh, intuitive when switch switching between week one and two. That was kind of confusing because it was like focus on one box and then go to another one. And so they're changing some UI stuff there. Now for the NPCs on the gameplay side, uh, the support stations now going to check line of sight between support station NPCs more frequently. Decreased tick rate of support station healing uh, for, to two seconds up from one and a half. Elite support stations now only provide overheal once per NPC. Support station heal amounts is now capped. Thankfully, it's no longer uh, infinite. Support stations no longer heal while affected by an MP EMP as well. That was a big glitch. Now, as far as I mentioned from the beginning, the Warhound changes. So the Warhound uh, Grenader, uh, the Grenadier, I hate this bastard. This guy and the minigun, both of them are T-1000. Pain in the ass. Uh, pets. 
the Warhound Grenadier, uh, the increasing windup warning of triple shoot of Warhound uh, has been changed. So you're going to be hearing the windup warning a little bit more. The after shoot delay uh, is coming as well. Uh, and then slightly increasing the cooldown of the mo uh, the moving shoot. So you're going to be able to, basically the, the Grenadier is being debuffed. Um, it is kind of de being debuffed. You're going to be hearing more of a warning sound. Some of the stuff's being changed around as far as the firing rate. So that's a positive. Now, for the one that melts through armor like freaking a hot knife on butter is the minigun warhound. Um, they're adjusting the behavior to flank less more frequently and maintain more distance to the players because they were having an issue to where this thing would pretty much charge at you like a red bar charge shotgunner and just wipe the entire group. Um, they're adjusting the path less to close players. Uh, they're also increasing the intention icon duration of the 360 spin, which will wipe an entire crew in some instances uh, to two and a half seconds up from two. Uh, reducing the 360 spin from Warhound to only two spins down from three. So hopefully that'll help reduce a few things with the frustration from these bad boys. And then reducing the range of the 360 spin from a Warhound minigun to 30 meters down from 70. So it's a lot shorter of a range associated with it. Now the tank archetype reactions to Hive and Turrets as well. So your, your big fat boys with the mini guns or rocket launchers as well. They're adding more distance checks to, so tanks don't rush at a Hive next to a player. Especially if you're healing, you pop that down and if they're all the way across the map, they're like, they're gonna see it and start charging at you. Well, hopefully they're changing that. Uh, reducing threat limits to tanks um, so they don't switch targets so suddenly. Um, the Outcast Incendiary and Molotov uh, has been reduced to tick damage itself. So tanks are being, are being debuffed as well, which is a, a pretty positive. Um, the developers actually did leave a comment associated with it as well, saying that the grenades were very strong compared to other factions' grenades. Uh, and so this is going to kind of try and bring them closer to line, which is a positive. Now, as far as bosses go, the Pentagon bosses, they are reducing the drone helicopter health and damage. Uh, they're slightly reducing the health and armor for Brenner at the Pentagon. Uh, his mortar damage is being reduced as well. And then they're decreasing the armor of John Figgs, the architect over at Pentagon. Because um, that, that dude was felt like it was taking about 20, 50 cal rounds to take down a piece of armor. Now, the last thing as well, like I mentioned from some of the bosses, mortars. Mortars are being reduced, reducing damage of mortars in Coney Island. Uh, they're increasing the delay between the UI warning and explosion damage of mortars in the National Washington Zoo. Uh, fixing general damage as well as scaling uh, with the mortars themselves. So mortars are even getting a debuff, which is a, kind of a positive. Skills for us. Now, agents, what are we going to see changed? First and foremost, the assault turret. Improving auto-targeting the assault turf is going to be greater for NPCs, so now it can shoot and it's going to be closer to it. So now it's going to be trying to take priority, which is very, very good. I know there are some instances with a skill build like I have where I can kind of direct uh, where I want my turret to go. But for those that kind of want it to free shoot, it's now going to be able to kind of go through an auto-target uh, and kind of help prioritize where it needs to go at that point. And then also the assault drone, uh, it's improving the behavior to prevent the drone from becoming stuck, improving the consistency of firing and pathing, which is great, because uh, both of these I felt were a, a much needed buff as far as its auto capabilities. Um, so hopefully this is a, a very big positive for us once it is implemented. And then status effects is one of the next things that are being changed uh, with title update five. The poison status effect uh, is now reducing the interval damage and duration. I know some of those, especially like the hyena purple poison, when that hits you, it's practically an insta death. So it seems like they are kind of reducing some of that. Um, and even their comment associated is even with the damage reduction to enemy NPCs, uh, poison continues to be extremely strong. And so this nerf will be alleviate this further. So they may nerf it again in, in a future title update. Um, EMP skills and shock effects are now going to be doing the same damage, uh, and several to same to NPC skills like the jammer or support units and nail bomb from thrower archetypes. So they're basically going to be doing multiple damage instead of solo damage now from the EMP. Lastly, leaderboards. 
resetting the leaderboards for Operation Dark Hours. That means everybody is running back through it. They're going back through the leaderboards to see who can get the fastest, which is a positive. So we're going to see that normal reset. All right, agents, I know I went through that pretty quick. I just kind of wanted to go over the briefs as to what this title update will be giving to us. Um, it looks like it's a lot of positive changes, um, some nerfs on some of the enemy side, which is much needed, and some buffs on the automation side from some skill builds for auto turrets and the auto drones, which is going to be very nice to have. Uh, so we'll see how those play through. And then the leaderboard reset as well on Dark Hours. So that'll be fun to kind of go back through as well. But I hope you're all enjoying the season so far. I know I am. Um, let me know down in the comments below. Do you think they missed something in the title update? I know me personally. I still feel like they need to debuff um, a lot of the fire damage that is being received as far as either from a grenade or from a cleaner or anything. This stuff is like lava and just melt through you. That's just one of my things. But let me know down in the comments below what you think. Uh, I apologize that I kind of went through it pretty quick, but uh, it was a pretty lengthy update as far as what's going on. Um, but let me know what you think. Also, if you've enjoyed today's video or anything else and look forward to further videos in regards to the division, uh, please hit that subscribe button to support the channel. It means the world to me if you do. Uh, also, if you're a night owl like I am, we do stream over on Twitch Monday through Thursday, 9.30 p.m. Central to late. We usually go about 1 to 2 a.m. Uh, as I'm a part-time gamer and a full-time dad, so whenever the family goes to sleep, we, uh, we game and hang out over there and discuss Division and, and several other games. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you all for watching again. And uh, I will see you in the next one.